Hello, everyone. This is Doug Davis with another session of Ask Doug, and getting lots of uh, questions about Waikiki condos, condo tells. And um, oh, by the way, I'm a broker in charge here at Karambi Realty, and so we're going to be talking about um, the changes that are happening um, all over Oahu with this Bill 41 the changes to short-term rentals, the NUCs, the different licenses that you can get, um, the zoning that you're allowed to have uh, short-term rentals on, and the uh, real property tax changes that will affect uh, short-term uh, renting owners. So, this is kind of complicated, but I'm gonna to try to boil this down very simply in bullet points here so that you can get it. So it's basically based on zoning, whether you can have a short-term rental or not. There are certain exceptions like getting your, your NUC license, which they haven't given any since I believe 1990. So, um, but there's um, uh, ways that you can get, uh, uh, there's certain exceptions, I'll go over that. So the, um, this relates to condo tells, uh, condos that have short-term renting that's allowed, um, whether it's grandfathered or it's on the appropriate zoning. So the, easiest, and I'm not talking about hotels, that's single ownership. And we're not talking about companies that own, we're talking about condo hotels where you can buy a unit in a property that has a, a hotel desk, or maybe it doesn't, but you can do the short-term rental. So let's take the easiest one, the zoning, is resort mixed use. That's what's in Waikiki that's generally from Cohio Avenue towards the ocean. That's all resort mixed use. Could be outside of Waikiki, but it would have to be uh, zoned resort, like Ko'olina or Kuilima on the North Shore. And this would be with a hotel desk, okay? So if you have resort mixed use, resort zoning, and a hotel desk, short-term rental is okay. Now, the caveat is that the house rules may change at any moment and then you can't do it. So if, the, if your association of apartment owners changes the short-term to have it or not have it, then you have to look at that. So whatever is stricter trumps the other. So if if you can, if the zoning allows for daily rental, short-term rental, then you can do it. But if the association says that you have to have one year, uh, then you cannot because it's more restrictive. Okay, so the buildings in Waikiki that would, would fit would be the Bamboo, the Ilikai, the Luana, Pacific Monarch, Regency on Beach Walk, the Ritz, Twin Tower, Trump, Trump Tower, Waikiki Beach Tower, Waikiki Grand Hotel, and Waikiki Shore. So those are all resort zoning with a hotel desk. Short-term rentals, okay. Okay, so that's the first one. Second one is resort zone, but no hotel desk. Yes, they have that and short-term is okay with this. And the buildings that, that fall in that category are 2465 Cohio Avenue, Cabana, Ilikai Marina, Imperial Hawaii Resort, Kalakauan, Cohio Village, Marine Surf, Niihau, Royal Aloha Seashore, and Tradewinds Plaza. These are okay for short-term rentals. And short-term Term rental right now is daily 
um, less than 30 days, which is about to go to 90 days on uh, in October of this year. So number three, third category, it's zoned apartment with the hotel grandfathered. Short-term rental is okay. So this is, these are the buildings. Oh, Aloha Serve, Hawaiian Monarch, Island Colony, Palms at Waikiki, Royal Gardens. And buildings outside of Waikiki would be Almoana Condo Hotel and Executive Center. Um, and Executive Center has some licensing problem, which they're trying to fix right now. But these are zoned apartment, remember, not resort zoned. So they're on the other side of the road, um, the other side of uh, Cohio Avenue towards the mountain. They're grandfathered. So I'm not sure who gave that list, but apparently the city agrees with this or they gave it. Okay, category four, it's two more. Apartment with hotel, apartment zoned with hotel, but they're not grandfathered. So therefore you may not have short-term rental. You could have Remember I said there were exceptions? Well, if you have an NUC, non-conforming use certificate, of which there's only about 800, and the number is going down because not everyone renews it every second year. And if you don't do it, you lose it forever. And it seems like the government would be quite happy getting rid of all of them. So um, there are two exempted buildings in Bill 41, and that's Waikiki Banyan and Waikiki uh, Sunset. They're exempted. So therefore, short-term rentals in those two buildings are okay. Um, and then the fifth category, last category, are apartment zoning, no hotel, therefore no short-term rental, um, or for that matter, no, no NUC. So the buildings that apply for that are 444 Nahua, Four Paddle, Royal Cujillo, and Waikiki Marina. Um, no short-term rentals in those buildings. None are allowed unless you have that license. Okay, so there's another layer to this that you really should be aware of the real property tax. So if you have a short-term rental and you, you are renting it out, short-term basis, then the real property tax level will be resort. It will be like the hotels. You'll have the highest tax rate um, known to man. <laughs> You'll have the highest tax rate to pay on your unit. So that will, that um, may go up, but if you do short-term rental, then you must have the higher tax rate. You, um, you'll you have fees and filing costs, um, and then you'll have the three taxes, the gross excise tax that you'll need to pay on your gross income from the short-term rental. You'll have the transient accommodation tax, um, otherwise known as TAT, the T-A-T, and then there's a new one that just started a um, few, few months back, and that's uh, OTAT, or Oahu Transient Accommodation Tax. So you've got those three things to pay um, in addition to the higher real property tax, plus all the fees for the different things that you do. And, and if you are sharing the uh, finding the tenant, with a hotel desk or management uh, company, then you know your fees may be 50% of the gross to the hotel or maybe more. So you gotta put on all those numbers to see if it's worthwhile buying and doing the short-term rental thing. Um, 
end uses just i just want to finish it with this uh just some of the buildings in Waikiki that have an NUC. 2121 Alawai has one. Aloha Towers has one. Monte Vista has three. 250 Ohua, one. Canal House has one. Fairway Villa has two. And buildings that have been renting short term for some time, quite a long time, that may not have short term rentals and do not have an NUC are Waikiki Lanai's, Waikiki Park Heights, in on the park. That whole building is short term. It, they, they can't do any short term. Diamond Head Beach Hotel, that's down the Gold Coast, down closer to Diamond Head, and Hawaiian King. So there it is in a nutshell. I know that's complicated. It's kind of a minefield. And I think there'll be little tweaks here and there on, on many different categories here as it becomes uh, solidified with the government and such. So, okay, so that's how you navigate Waikiki condo tells um, as it relates and as they're figuring it out how Waikiki um, fares in, um, in relationship to Bill 41. So there you have it. Um, hope that may be helpful to some of you that wanted to know. All right, and that's it. Until next week, talk to you soon.